In this video, we will continue our discussion on template results. We will take a look at the value column of the template results, understand how it works and how we can customize this column. Values actually correspond to a set of bytes in the input file. For example, the attribute type has a value of 16. This 16 is derived from the first four bytes of the input file. By default, 010 editor interprets the values in little endian format. So let us take these first four bytes and copy them. I'm now going to open up the calculator, which is one of the built-in tools. I will paste the bytes that I copied from the input file, remove the spacing in between, add a h as a suffix to indicate it is a hexadecimal value and just run the calculator. As you can see, if the first four bytes of the file are interpreted in the same order or in big endian format, this would be the value. Now, if this number is written in little Indian, it will be 00000010. Basically, the byte ordering is reversed. The value represented by these four bytes is 16, which is what we see here. The Indianness can be controlled in two ways. One is from the editor itself. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see LIT, which means little Indian. You can actually click on that and you will have an option to swap the Indianness. For example, I'll just change it to big Indian and I will run the template again. You can see that the interpretation of the value changes. The second and the more reliable way to set the Indianness is to do it as part of the template itself. There is a built-in function called little Indian, which will force all the values following this function call to be interpreted in the little Indian format. So let me run the template again. Now you can see that the values are interpreted in little Indian. Even if I change the Indianness now to big Indian and run the template, there is no change in the interpretation of values. Now that we have Indianness out of the way, let us take a look at the data types. So these four bytes, by default, it will be interpreted in line with the data type you give for the template variable. For example, attribute type is an integer. So it is interpreted as an integer. The 010 editor has something called as the inspector, which actually shows you 18 other interpretations of that set of bytes. So these four bytes, if they are interpreted as an integer, it would be 16. But what if it is a signed byte, unsigned byte, and so on. You can use the inspector as an additional reference. We have now looked at NDNS and data types. Let us see what else we can do with the value column. One interesting feature is the items in the value column are editable. For example, if you take the attribute type, I can double click on that and change the value. The present value is 16. I can make it, let's say 45. Then I just need to press enter. When I change something in the values column, it automatically gets changed in the input file to little Indian hex. Likewise, you can change any of these fields. So the date is an interesting field that you can change. Let's say instead of making this 2019, I want to change it to 2020. You don't have to bother about how this date is represented in hex. The changes will be made automatically. The next thing we will look at is something called as enumerations. Let's take the example of the resident flag. So this is a one byte field. And if the value is zero, it means that the attribute is resident. And if it is one, it means it is non-resident. So here, instead of showing zero or one, it would be clearer if I can show yes or no. The way to do that is using enumerations. So I go back to my template and I create an enumerated data type. I say type def enum byte which means I'm creating an enumeration for a byte data type and I give it a name and I call it resident flag. Inside the enumeration, I define what I want the values to represent. So if the value is zero, then it will be enumerated as yes. And if the value is one, it will be enumerated as no. I now go back to the attribute structure and I comment this out. And instead of this, I create a variable of the type resident flag and I give it the same name. I have saved the template and I'm going to run it again. Here you can see instead of zero or one, it shows whatever you have defined in the enumerated data type. You can actually edit an enumerated value in two ways. So you can either say zero or one, or you can say yes or no. Okay, now let's move ahead and see how else we can customize the value column. We took a look at enumerations. There is something similar to enumerations, which is called a read function. In a couple of videos back, I was talking about properties that are available for every template variable, like the name, comment, color, and so on. So every template variable also has the read property. The read property allows you to define a function which will handle the value of the variable. 
Let's look at an example here. We have a field called is indexed. 0 means it is indexed, 1 means it is not indexed. I can create an enumeration for this or I can also create a read function. So I'll show you how to create a read function. So the read is just a property of the corresponding template variable. If I scroll down, the corresponding template variable is this, the indexed flag. So here is where I can define the read function. So I have defined a corresponding read function for this template variable. When the value for this variable is going to get printed in the template results, this function will be called and the indexed flag will automatically be sent as an input to this function. Now I'm going to define this function. This function will take a byte as an input and it will return a string as an output. So inside this function, I'm saying if the input value is zero, then return indexed. If the value is one, then return not indexed. Otherwise return undefined index value. So I save the template and I run it. Here you can see the function is returning the value indexed. The read function is more flexible than using an enumeration. You can basically put together multiple values from the input file and decide what needs to be shown in the value column. When you try to edit this string, you will see that you cannot simply give indexed or not indexed. You have to give the numeric value. If you want to customize this behavior, you also have a write function which you can define as part of the template variable. The behavior is quite similar to how a read function behaves, so I'm not going to show that example explicitly. With that, we come to the end of this video. Here we have seen a few ways in which you can influence what is being shown in the value column of the template results. In the last four or five videos, we have seen what is a binary template, how we can build a template using the 010 editor, and how we can customize the results. I think these set of videos should be able to help you build simple templates and customize the results. If I see there are any other topics which will help in building a template, then I will create subsequent videos on this topic. Thanks for watching.